Commercial Credit Union for Purdue fans and by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Unity Healthcare, your preferred healthcare partner for exceptional care. Now, here is your host, Tim Newton. The Boilermakers dropped their next to last non-conference game of the season yesterday at Notre Dame. Purdue now 6-5 and five on the season. They'll finish off the non-conference schedule on Wednesday morning. It's Education Day at Mackey Arena as Purdue takes on Indiana State. That game will tip off at 11 o'clock in the morning, so we'll have our broadcast starting at 1045. Good evening, everybody. It is the Katie Gerald Show from Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. And on cue, the audience applauds, as just as planned. Uh, we're going to talk Boilermaker basketball with the head coach until the top of the hour. I believe that Alex Guyton will be joining us as well tonight as Purdue gets ready to take on Indiana State and then head out for the holiday break for a few days. So we're going to talk with Katie when we come back. Again, you can follow along tonight on Purdue Athletics on our Facebook site. Let us know where you're watching, if you've got all your Christmas shopping done, all your holiday plans complete, and if you have any questions for the coach as well. We'll have the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hi, I'm Caitlin Harper. And I'm Elena Harper. So I'm drinking a strawberry acai refresher. And I am drinking a iced vanilla latte. Um, I'm most excited for a new experience um, with new teammates and getting to play with my sister, of course. I'm also excited to play with Elena for the first time. Um, and I'm just excited about our new team and all the fun places we get to travel to. I think for me it's going to be kind of surreal because I, like we've always been four years apart so obviously in high school we just missed each other. So it's going to be kind of like a, wow, Elena's actually <laughs> right next to me and not in the stands. Yeah. Mine's probably anything more you want but I'm pretty sure it was up down where you want. I guess the last song I looked up was, I think it was Rihanna. I will take the crown on that one. A million I'm percent. I'm actually so good because I can do any beat. Like, give me any song, any. But like, you genre. have to catch her when no one's watching. That's yeah. when it's the best. When she's just like in her element, in her in her like, zone, yeah. and she just goes off whatever is in her head. That's when it's the best. Oh, okay. My first was probably Zac Efron from High School Musical. Mine is probably Justin Bieber. I like the spinach artichoke dip with the yeah. chips. That's I would also agree, or just the classic kings. But the platter, where you get a little bit of everything, is the best. Yeah. But it's not half price. My dad and my mom both love. Yeah, I would also say my parents. You're listening to the Katie Gerald Show. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. You know, one of the great things about the holiday season, Katie, is you just never know who's going to drop by. And Beth Kuchar is in the house, one of our former assistant coaches. I'm going to give her... You know, it's it's good to see a smiling face after a day like yesterday. No we doubt. all needed that smiling face. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's helped lift my spirits quite a bit. Um, you know, it's uh, in a in a really short amount of time. Uh, Beth just wasn't my assistant coach. She became uh, one of my best friends in the world, and uh, she's she's been a rock for me. Well, let's talk about the Notre Dame. I, I promised her we would hold this one to segment. one segment tonight. One segment, please. You know, I, I think if you look at the schedule so far, you've played 11 games. You've been in nine of the 11 games. I mean, obviously you've won six of those. The, the three that you lost other than the, the two we're going to talk about were, were very competitive. I think we see with UCLA and Notre Dame where you want this program to get back to. And it's a great opportunity for your kids to see what the measuring stick is. You look at that Notre Dame roster, now some of them were out injured. There are seven McDonald's All-Americans on that roster, and four of the eight kids who played yesterday are McDonald's All-Americans. That's a lot of talent to try to overcome. Yeah, um, I th you know, it's crazy because we, we talk about not turning the basketball over. We go out and we pass up an open shot, turn the basketball over. Um, we get in the paint, we get two feet in the paint, um, don't take a shot, turn it over. 
Um, and before you know it, it's it's seven nothing. And then they go up eleven zero. We go on a little seven zero run of ourselves, um, of ourselves, and you just you know. Never quite clicked on the offensive end. I thought we got really good looks. I think we 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 took four four less shots than they did. You know, we took 57. They took yep. 61. Yep. Um, at halftime, we had a team that was scoring 92 points a game to 35. Um, we just can't score the basketball, and um, you know, not for for lack of not working. You know, our kids are in the gym and and trying to get shots up and um, trying to be more game like in practice. Um, you know, it just one of those things, like it, the ball just not going in, and uh, we've got to stay with it and trust what we're doing. I think, I think we've got a group that that we all believe in. Um, you know, just trying to get a little bit more consistency um, from 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 our group. But uh, good experience, yeah. obviously. You know, talk, great atmosphere yesterday. You know, talking about where where we want to go and um, what we want to do with our program. Um, we're not that far off, as crazy as it seems. And I think in the long run, you know, if you, you look at the end game, um, days like yesterday are going to be really, really good for our program. Well, and I think you talked about it after the game. You go back to that UCLA game, and, and your team really got boat raced in the fourth quarter. I mean, it, it went from bad to worse. Yesterday, after a tough third quarter, you bounced back, and you were a minus one in the fourth quarter, but I thought really fought to the end. That's a sign of growth over the last few weeks. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of remember having the same conversation with our group at the end of the third quarter, start of the fourth quarter um, yesterday as I did at UCLA. Like, y'all, let's just finish this game. Like, forget the score. Let's go out there and compete as hard as we can compete. Don't leave anything left the last ten minutes. And um, against UCLA, I mean, I, I think we lost the fourth quarter by, like, 20 points. I, th I thought we quit. And I remember being on the show, like, how disheartening that was to, to kind of look at our group and just see, like, just a flat quit. And I didn't see that yesterday. And we didn't just lose the, the fourth quarter by one point to their bench, right? Like, mm -hmm. they played yeah. well, seven they didn't players. Have a bench. <laughs> <laughs> right, right? Like, we lost by one point to, you know, four McDonald's All Americans. You know, Hannah Hidalgo is a problem. Um, they've got six, three, six, four, six, five inside. Um, and they were all on the court in the fourth quarter. And our, our team didn't back down. There was a different feel a different vibe um, in our timeout. There was 3.36 left on the third quarter clock. And I just told – I was like, hey, y'all, the next 13.36, we're just going to fight. Mm -hmm. Forget everything else. We're just going to fight. And that's going to set us up for what we hope is going to happen in the Big Ten. And I thought our group responded. You know, Hidalgo's a great player, and I think she showed us yesterday what she's capable of. I and mean, she flirted with a quadruple double. The player I really like on their team is Maddie Westbelt. Man, is she, she can do everything. She's big. She can rebound. She can shoot from the outside. She can shoot from the inside. She's got the complete game. Yeah, she was she was tough. You know, we, we started Mary Ashley on her, and uh, Mary Ashley battled her inside, but then she was able to get to her mid-range game and shoot the basketball. And then, you know, you switch Mads or Ken on her, and then they just she just buried them in the post. Like, her, her skill set, I mean, is, is a lot of pros on that Notre Dame team that we were going up against. Um, but forget the score. I thought for the most part our group didn't back down. And – um, if we can keep carrying that on, you know, we just keep hoping for the right night to kind of have a, a really good offensive offensive power night. Uh, Sheila has a question. When And you had this one. You had the UCLA game earlier this year. When you have a loss like you had yesterday, how do you address it? When you come back to practice, how, I mean, you, you've got to face it. Yeah. You, you've got to sin it, and, and, and you've got to get better from it. Yeah, you don't run from it. Um, uh, you know, tape doesn't lie. A lot of things you can, you can show. Um, a lot of things we showed were stuff that we did right, like we – you know, we screened Notre Dame well. We got pin downs on the backside, wide open, didn't go in. Um, uh, turnovers, obviously, you know, getting in the paint. And the, what, what, what is interesting is when we pass up open shots is when we end up turning it over on the, yeah. on the possession, right? So, like, seeing those guys, like, we work hard to get the first open shot. Let's take it so we don't feel like we're, we're trying to rush or turn something over later in the shot clock. Um, you know, we, we watched that. I thought defensively, for the most part, um, we guarded what we thought they were going to do in a, in a – they hadn't played for 12 days, so they did a couple things different that we hadn't seen on tape. But everything we saw on tape, our group followed the game plan. Um, you know, it's just a matter of us just knocking down shots and having confidence in ourselves and in each other. And um, I, our group responded today. I thought we had a, a, a good day, um, spent some time on Indiana State. Obviously, got to move on to the next day with only two days of prep. But uh, did some things that, that, that hope we got better. 
um, and then and then some good game prep for Indiana State. You know, you got the Irish coming to Mackey Arena next year, a chance to show them how much you've improved over the course of the year. A lot of work to do between now and then, but the, the, this isn't over yet. It's no, not over yet. No, it's not over. It's it's the beginning for us. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know <laughs> I think about, like, kind of what Niel took over, mm -hmm. right? Like, yep. a really, really good program. And, um, you know, a couple years ago, we're, where we where we were and where we are now, we've got a long way to go to get there. But, um, you know, days like yesterday are steps we have to take to get to where they are. All right. We will take a break. We'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Field. My name is Emily Munson. I am a freshman and I'm from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I'm Abby Ellis. I am a fifth year senior and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. My name is Mary Ashley Stevenson. I am a freshman from New York City. I'm drinking a vanilla sweet cream culver. I am an ice coffee bean. I am drinking a strawberry refresher with lemonade. And you will never see me with coffee. I will always have tea. This is a chai tea latte with almond milk. I let my game do the talking. I do not get involved in that. Yeah, not the same. <laughs> I, I like to talk a little bit. Uh, nothing, nothing bad, but you know, I'm a chatterbox. So I like, I like to talk and just like me out a little bit and then just run everywhere to try and get them out of breath. I am very similar to Emily. I let my game do all the talking and yes, let my opponents wear themselves out trying to get into my head conversation of like if we were an object what would we be <laughs> and she we've all come to the consensus that she is a flower Emily is 100% a flower Abby's a lollipop <laughs> she has self -proclaimed. I have a few I've been described as a disco ball a cactus with a flower with a pink flower, flower. Pink pink flower. Yeah. and a, uh, sunshine and sunshine 10 11 Eight. Zero! I do not have my license! <laughs> She's never driven! I've taken one driving driving lesson with Coach Katie Gerald hey. and that was it. <laughs> you guys both came home safe. Yes, oh. we did. Yes. Absolutely not. I've made it every day I've been here and at home I never made it at all. That's I'm so proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I like to see a loss. I like to see a loss in the pool in the spring. Yeah. And in season. <laughs> Roll out of bed, crawl to the door. <laughs> Anyways! <laughs> That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Wrap it up. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. We do have a big break coming up after tonight's show. Our next Katie Gerald show will be five weeks from tonight on January 22nd. However... We do have one more stop here at Walk-Ons before the end of the year. We will have our final Ryan, Ryan Walters show of the season. That's coming up Wednesday night at 6.05. So be here for that or tune in on our sister station, WAZY. Um, the defense, we talked a little bit about the defense and the fact that you know, sometimes the offense isn't clicking. You've got to continue to play defense. After the UCLA game, your team is giving up only 67 points a game. What has made it better defensively since that opening game and maybe since last season? Yeah, I think our group has, um, you know, after the UCLA game, just walking through scout breakdowns, um, especially with our young kids, like understanding what the importance of the scout do scout is and, and, and how to take, you know, tendencies away. I think, what was it? Um, outside of UCLA before last night, we had held nine teams to 65 points right. or left, 88 teams to 60 points or less. Um, so we've done a really good job on that. Uh, it just the offensive end, it's 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 gonna click. Um, and and you know our our hope and prayers are that we're just saving saving it all for the next 17 Big Ten games. Sa staying on the defensive side, though, uh, you know a lot of a lot of kids that come into the program, not just here but everywhere, they're so much better than the competition they play in high school. Um, they don't really have to play or they're not asked to play a lot of defense sometimes. And sometimes they just hide, they hide in the zone depending on where they're coming from. How hard is it to get them to understand that a scouting report's important because that person you're playing against is as good or maybe better than you are? And that wasn't the case when you were in high school. Yeah, no doubt. It's, um, you know, it's a challenge. And I think our young kids are still fighting that a little bit. But, uh you know, if you're going to score 15, you can't give up 16 or 17, right? right? Like, just making sure that they understand all that. Um, and, and 
our, you know, our kids have, have learned, and, and I think as a staff, we're adjusting to what's best for us. Um, you know, I think last year we were able to do a different, you know, some different things with like Cass and Ricky and Ava. Um, but now, like understanding our personnel and what Mary Ashley is really good at, what Caitlin's really good at, um, and us as a staff trying to put them in the best position to be successful. Um, and for the most part, I think we've done a pretty good job. Um, and, and for us, it's just about a matter of just finishing plays. Um, if, you know, as long as we can go out there and, and compete and, and finish plays, we'll give ourselves a chance um, for most most nights. The other important thing is when you get those uh, those stops defensively, you've got to rebound. And, and I, in the first half yesterday, you were really good. Second half, not so good. But in the season, even though you're fairly undersized compared to some other teams, you've held your own on the boards, it seems like, so far. Yeah, you look at, like, um, you know, Florida, Texas A&M, Georgia. Um, we've, we've done a good job. I mean – I know Notre Dame shot 50%, but they averaged 17 offensive rebounds. I think they had seven or yeah. eight. You know, they we, they were under 10 um, last night. So, just finishing plays for us on the defensive end, um, and and because we know we understand we you know our limitations in the half court, we got to be able to get up in the, in the open floor to make plays. And by the way, Notre Dame also was averaging 92 points a game coming in yesterday. So again, you held them 16 under their season average. Yeah, and you know, and there was that third quarter where they kind of got out and leaked and and got some transition buckets, but. We had them at 35. It was 35 to 18 at halftime, and mm -hmm. we walk in there like, God, you know, we're down 17, but it doesn't feel like we're that far off. It was just a matter of making a few more shots. Uh, by the way, you've had eight games this year where you've held opponents to 60 or below, and that's tied for ninth best, not in the Big Ten, but in the country. You're tied with Minnesota for the Big Ten lead. So uh, certainly the defense is coming around, and let's hope that offense can match it here pretty soon. It, it Wednesday would, would be a good time Wednesday to start. Wednesday would be a good good time going into the Christmas holiday, and then uh, hopefully bring it back after that. Speaking of time, we need to take a break. We'll have more in two minutes on the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Edie at a very high rate. Off both. the screen, pull up, pop, money, and right off the bat. And both the lawyer. Edie, another touch, working on Balo. Drop step, can't finish. Put back there, Trey Kaufman ran. Convert on the three ball, another second chance opportunity. Lawyer on the drive. Probe through, Hanks, oh, and Hanks. Hey. Edie thought about it, gets rid of it. Lawyer, open, deep shot. Oh, yeah! This Arizona offense so potent. There's Edie on a touch. Forced it all the way through. Who's going to look for those middle post-ups all afternoon? Lawyer jumps the pass. Lawyer takes it in and puts it through. Oh, you like action. We have got action in this one. There's some tired bodies out there. How about Fletcher Lawyer showing the defense on that play? And now it's Edie on the steal. Purdue looking to run. Morton parking in the corner. Leave it. Edie, oh, great, great pass, pass inside. And the finish from Gillis. First half, handoff, lawyer, slither of space is Bjorn. Oh, here is up. Jones misses. Caleb first has given some. Smith looking inside, finds Edie, working against Balo. Just goes right to his spot, counting and a foul. Umar Balo going up and tearing the rim off. Lawyer, big response. Circles around. Smith, show, stop, up and under. Puts it through. Full court pressure now from the Wildcats, broken with ease by Jones. Cross court, Lawyer, to oh, high off the wow. window. He can do no wrong. Smith, pull up in transition. Second half, now a zone look from Arizona. They're pulling everything out. Lawyer, makes him pay. Smith, swinging around. Jones, a three. He knocks it down. Lawyer will inbound. Get it in for Smith. Right back to Lawyer, and they break that pressure immediately. Jones on the take and finish. Plus one. He's been feeding Edie at a very high rate. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Lafayette Limo, family-owned, women-owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare Airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Uh, speaking of flying, you, you have a game on Wednesday morning. Do you have any plans for the holidays? You're going to hang around. Well, let's see. Um, Christmas with my family is December 23rd. Okay. I have a flight to Kansas City on the 24th, and there's a Kansas City 
Las Vegas Raiders game on the 25th that I will be attending. How coincidental. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go is, ahead. is Taylor Swift going to have you up in the suite with her? Um, no, actually front row on the 45-yard line right go. behind the Chiefs bench. Where the real so, fans are. Um, <laughs> so hopefully it's not too cold out there. Um, but go ahead and look for me because I will do that. I will be cheering for my Chiefs, but also hoping Aiden O'Connell has a good game without torching us. Understood. Uh, Ira coming in from Swamico, Wisconsin. As always, Linda's in Grand Haven, Michigan. My friend John in Littlestown, Pennsylvania. He wants Santa to take away the turnovers. That and would I think be great, we would John. all be on, on oh, board with that. Please. Sheila, uh, Linda wants to know if Mary Ashley has a black eye. She could, she took a pretty good shot to the face she yesterday. She did, no black eye. Um, it got, got a little bloody nose yesterday in the game, but uh, no, no nothing. And actually, she texted me about an hour ago. Hey, coach, practice at 11. Let's get in the gym and get some shots up at 9. There you um, go. Just a really special kid that's yep. a, that's addicted to getting better. Uh, Carol from Beach Grove, your hometown, saying hello as well. Uh, let's give a quick update. Uh, I know we're, we're all focused on 2023-24, but in college athletics, you've always got to look ahead. You've got three kids that you've signed for next year. Uh, give us an update what you've seen or what you've heard lately. Jordan Poole, Kendall Perrier, and Lana McCarthy. Um, Jordy's out here balling in the state of Indiana. Um, just a really dynamic player that can, you know, put people on skates very similar to what Hannah Hidalgo did to us. Mm -hmm. um, put pressure on the defense and score. Um, Lana was um, New Hampshire's uh, state volleyball player of the year. Um, so a really good athlete coming our way at 6'4". And uh, KP's playing pretty well. She actually just had a 30-22 rebound night. Um, so proud of, uh, you know, what those guys are doing and what they can bring to us in the future. Speaking of rebounding, I didn't mention before, Mary Ashley Stevenson, by the way, is the leading rebounding freshman in the Big Ten. And, again, at 6'2", you know, not she's not – She's got decent size, but she's going up against kids that are a lot bigger than her, and, and she's more than holding her own right now. Yeah, I mean, you think about the schedule we've played when, you know, UCLA, Notre Dame, uh, Georgia, Florida, Texas A&M. Like, she's, this, this young kid is battling some, some bigs and holding her own. Um, you know, she's, she's putting up really good numbers. We've got to put her in better positions to be more successful on the offensive end, and I think we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, but the kid doesn't back down, and uh, she's getting some really, really high-quality minutes for us and our team. You mentioned not backing down. I did talk to her a couple of weeks ago, and, she, and I talked about the physicality of some of the games. She said, I, I played games in the Bronx. This is nothing. <laughs> you know. The, there are no rules when you play games in the Bronx. Yeah, she's a special kid right there. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Katie, uh, Mark's mom and Madison's grandma is checking in, so it's saying go Boilers. Hey, Boiler up. Uh, what's the holiday schedule? You practice today. You'll practice tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You play on Wednesday, and then what happens after that? So then everybody will go home. We'll bring everybody back the night of the 26th. Um, we'll have a little, you know, small weight session, get their legs back going underneath them on the night of the 26th, and then we have 27th, 28th, 29th prep for Wisconsin. Um, so enough to get your lungs back um, on the 26th and the 27th and then prep for, for Wisconsin the 28th, 29th. We play the 30th, um, then what? 31st first and then we play we play Rutgers right away so yep. um, quick turnaround is going to come really fast but hopefully everybody will just kind of get out of here get a get a breath of fresh air enjoy their family enjoy their friends enjoy the holidays um, and then come back ready to go for 17 really important ball games all right we're going to let you swap stories with coach Kucher for a few minutes we'll bring Alex Guyton up next sounds great all right it is the Katie Gerald show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield <laughs>
Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. We're joined by assistant coach Alex Guyton. We were just taking a look at the live stats. Big game tonight in Columbus, Ohio. UCLA, which is undefeated and ranked number two, is playing at Ohio State. UCLA leads that one. 39-31 early in the third quarter. They lead despite being 0 for 10 from three-point range. Where were those misses back in the beginning of November when they couldn't miss a shot in Pauley Pavilion? Man, we could have used that momentum <laughs> right there. It's going to be – it'll be interesting to watch this one. Uh, Madison Green, by the way, who's been out with an injury for the entire season so far, back for the Buckeyes tonight. So we'll, we will see them a little bit later in the season. All right, I asked the coach uh, when you have a situation like you had yesterday, you mm -hmm. kind of come off a tough loss. You know, coaches have to come back. It's a new day. It's a new game to get ready for. How do you help turn the page and get ready for Indiana State? I think you just have to continue to remind them that everything we go through is a learning opportunity. That adversity is only going to make us stronger going forward. And if we can learn from the experience, it can make us better. If we want to sit and dwell in it and, and be sad sack sallies, as he would see that, say, then it's not going to help us going forward. Uh, you could see, though, again, some of the growth from last, uh, even from six weeks ago when you played UCLA and that game really got out of hand in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, Katie mentioned it before. I mean, it wasn't like Notre Dame could go to the end of the bench because they only had eight players suit up yesterday, including a right. former walk on right I think just the the level of engagement from those who weren't playing and those who were playing and just not the the no fight mentality you know we put we dug ourselves a really big hole and it'd been easy just to to sit there and dwell in it but we saw some some people communicating with each other some bright spots and, and some players and I think that's that's growth going forward talked a lot about Mary Ashley so far but what do you think has made her su as successful as she's been this early in her career just her willingness to be a sponge she wants to know as much information as much as possible and she wants to absorb it and learn and grow from it every opportunity she has anything you said to her she's locked in she's engaged to it and she wants to propel herself forward nothing is to propel herself backwards uh, she's a, has a couple of good mentors including um, Caitlin Harper who's mm -hmm. a graduate student and, and provides some some leadership and stability there. And again, Caitlin, I think, is a player who maximizes the athletic abilities that she has. Absolutely. And she, Caitlin's just so steady. She's the rock. You know what I mean? She may not seem like she's doing a lot, but she does everything for our team. And I think she's just a great sounding board for not only our younger kids, but our vets, too. Because when stuff goes, starts getting wrong, they start to look at her because she is so steady. Uh, has all your, I don't know if I asked you the last time you were on, has all your holiday shopping done yet? We are a week away from now from Christmas, by the way. I have not started. <laughs> I haven't, let me, let haven't me, even made progress, haven't made a list. I have no clue where I'm at Let me repeat that it. statement. We are a week away from Christmas <laughs> now. You know, they're not going to move that back for you. So, Alex, you need to kind of get going here a little I bit. Do. Uh, Greg is watching from South Bend. He says rebound from the Irish showing. And, you know, it's an opportunity. We haven't talked about the Indiana State game, but it's mm -hmm. going to be a great opportunity in front of a really lively crowd because it's education day, and that mm -hmm. means we're going to have elementary school and middle school students, and I think we ought to give them all free pixie sticks with sugar I'll as they it. come in to make sure that they're <laughs> bouncing off the walls, and they'll be screaming. And they're, for an 11 o'clock game, it's going to have a lot of energy in there. Oh, yeah, and that's exciting. I think the girls will be able to feed off that energy of just little kids just screaming bloody murder throughout the entire game. So it'll be fun for everybody, and for it to be at 11 o'clock, it'll be a good crowd. And you know from your days, because I, well, you, did you, you were born in South Bend? Or, no, or, I was born in California. My mom's from South Bend, okay, so we visit right. there regularly. Okay, uh, and, but being from Bloomington, mm -hmm. you understand that when you play any team from inside the state, mm -hmm. and particularly when you look at Indiana State, Ball State, we played Southern Indiana yep. earlier, lots of those kids probably wanted to wear black and gold, so you know that they're going to be primed and ready to play for a game at Mackey. Oh, absolutely. We've mentioned multiple times this is their national championship game. They want to prove to everybody why they should have gone to Purdue, and it's our job to prove why they didn't go to Purdue. All right, we'll have more with Alex Guyton after this. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Hi, I'm Caitlin Harper. And I'm Elena Harper. So I'm drinking a strawberry acai refresher. And I am drinking a iced vanilla latte. Um, I'm most excited for a new experience um, with new teammates and getting to play with my sister, of course. I'm also excited to play with Elena for the first time, um, and I'm just excited about our new team and all the fun places we get to travel to. I think for me it's going to be kind of surreal because I, like, we've always been four years apart, so obviously in high school we just missed each other. So it's going to be kind of like a, wow, Elena's actually <laughs> Right next to me and not in the stands. Yeah. Mine's probably anything Marie Wong, but I'm pretty sure it was up down Marie Wong. 
I guess the last song I looked up was, I think it was Rihanna. I will take the crown on that one. A million I'm percent. I'm actually so good, because I can do any beat. Like, give me any song, any, but like, you have to catch her when no one's watching. That's yeah. when it's the best. When she's just like in her element, in her, in her like, zone, and yeah. she just goes off whatever is in her head. That's when it's the best. Oh, okay. My first was probably Zac Efron from High School Musical. Mine is probably Justin Bieber. I like the spinach artichoke dip with the yeah. chips. I would also agree, or just the classic kings, but the platter, where you get a little bit of everything, is the best. Yeah. But it's not half price. My dad and my mom both play. Yeah, I would also say my parents. You're listening to The Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time for our Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student-athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler-made. We only had two players play last weekend, but they were pretty good. Ariana Harris in Spain had 13 points, which was a season high, and she grabbed nine rebounds in a 64-51 to win to improve her team to 3-8 and eight on the season. Ariana is averaging just under seven points and nine rebounds a game. But you got to hand it to the old lady again, Aya Traore, 40 years old, in 21 minutes, 13 points and 21 rebounds. Her third double-double of the season as her team won 79-58 to to improve to 4-5. and five on the season. Aya Traore may play forever. Man, what a blessing to keep going. I guess so. I wanted to talk, you played professionally, mm -hmm. and, and you look at those scores, and they play, it looks like, every Saturday. Mm -hmm. So what do you do the other six days when you're a professional basketball player in Europe? <laughs> well, you can go two routes. You can veg and do absolutely nothing, or you can keep yourself busy, um, be in the gym, be proactive in the community. I was... Option, uh, very fortunate to have a good mentor who got me involved in the culture, got me involved in the community. Um, it was a good mentor teaching me how to be a pro of getting in the gym and doing a little bit of extra on your own and things like that. So you can make the most of it or you can kind of swindle away and just depend on just game day or you can really live. You know, I, I, I got a chance to do a few games with the Indiana Fever a few years ago and, and just the whole, the, the way they travel and the whole vibe of it, you know, after the game, everybody goes their own way. Mm -hmm. In fact, you don't even have to take the team bus to the game or from back from the game, as long as you get to the game on time. Exactly. It, it was like 12 independent contractors working, in a, just an entirely different vibe than what you see in the college level. Absolutely, and I think that was my hardest adjustment, especially my first five months there, is like when you're involved in college, everything is a team. Everything you do is about the team and with the team. When you become a pro, everybody's on their own. And as American, if you don't show up and do what you're supposed to do, it's on you. It's not on anybody else. And that was a, a big adjustment for me. But once you get the hang of it, you kind of enjoy the independence and enjoy the responsibility of it, and you really get to cultivate your own identity. You know, I do remember one game, uh, the, the, the Fever played in Houston, and I think they lost the game in double, maybe double overtime. And everybody was going to um, uh, <laughs> Catchings, uh, mm -hmm. Tamika Catchings' house after the game. Uh, and the, no, no players were on the bus. So the only people riding the bus back were Lynn Dunn and the assistant coaches, me, Jane Schott, who was working the game with mm -hmm. me, and we were supposed to wait for the PR guy. Well, we left without him. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, we've only got five guys that are supposed to be on right. the bus, and, and the bus left without him. And mm -hmm. he, he, he called us as we were driving, and we said, well, um, Kevin, you need, to, you need to get a cab back to the hotel because <laughs> we're, we're gone. gone. <laughs> yeah, we're not coming back for you. So uh, that, I learned very quickly, be on time for the buses because exactly. they're not going to wait for you. They are not. Um, how do you spend – how will you spend the holidays? Um, I'll go down to Bloomington. Um, I actually have a, my uncle flying in from Minnesota, so he'll spend some time with me and my mom, and then my grandparents live in Bloomington as well well um so my aunt will come down from indy so we'll have a, kind of like a christmas eve all together and then christmas day kind of in our individual pockets um but just a good time for we're thankful to have four or five days with our with our individual or family so that's really nice were there traditions growing up i mean every christmas uh did, did you do the same thing or go the same places or did it vary from year to year um usually like we have a staple christmas eve we kind of do our last minute shopping that mid-morning yeah you then, said you haven't started so you yeah. got a few days left right? honestly Before yeah christmas, christmas eve. eve will probably be really cool for me um, and then um, usually that evening we kind of settle down. 
around and we usually just have like uh, snacks and little snacks throughout the day. And like my favorite thing is eight o'clock is to start watching a Christmas story and I will watch it literally all the way until noon the next day when the good basketball games start. So that is kind of like our little thing. Uh, we have Elf. Elf is a Christmas Eve staple now in go. our household. So, well, good luck and, and happy holidays to you and the Guyton family. Let's Thank get you. a win on Wednesday to feel good about Absolutely. and then come back ready to go for the new year. I right, appreciate you, Tim. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us after this. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. My name is Emily Munson. I am a freshman and I'm from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I'm Abby Ellis. I am a fifth year senior and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. My name is Mary Ashley Stevenson. I am a freshman from New York City. I don't drinking uh, vanilla sweet cream culver. I am an ice coffee bean. I am drinking a strawberry refresher with lemonade. And you will never see me with coffee. I will always have tea. This is a chai tea latte with almond milk. I let my game do the talking. I do not get involved in that. Yeah, not the same. <laughs> uh, I like to talk a little bit, uh, nothing nothing bad, but you know, I'm a chatterbox, so I like, I like to talk and just like me out a little bit and then just run everywhere, try and get them out of breath. I am very similar to Emily, I let my game do all the talking and yes, let my opponents wear themselves out trying to get into my head. We have the conversation of like, if we were an object, what would we be? <laughs> and she would all come to the consensus that she is a flower, Emily is 100% a flower, Abby's a lollipop. <laughs> so I have a few. I've been described as a disco ball, a cactus with, with a flower, with a pink flower, flower. With a pink yeah. flower and a, uh, sunshine. And sunshine. Ten. Eleven. Eight. Zero. I do not have my license. <laughs> She's never driven. I've taken one driving driving lesson with Coach Katie Gerald, Eight. and that was it. <laughs> you guys both came home safe. Yes, oh. we did. Yes. Absolutely not. I've made it every day I've been here, and at home I never made it at all. That's I'm so proud of that. <laughs> yeah, I like to see a loss. I like to see a loss in the pool in the spring. Yeah. Any scene. <laughs> Roll out of bed, crawl to the door. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that's a wrap. That's a wrap. See y'all. Wrap Woo! it up. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. I want to give a thanks to uh, Tom Schott and to Ian McDougall. They put together a very nice story that's running on the Purdue Sports website. It is going to be my 1,000th game on Wednesday, and it's been an honor to do this for 1,000 games. It's uh, January 3rd, 1991. Huh? Yeah. First uh, first game you called. We, we were just talking about it. It was a game against Ohio State. Purdue had never beaten Ohio State before. And Nancy Darsh, I think, could see the writing on the wall because it was, you know, it was one of those points where Ohio State was starting to slip and Purdue was starting to go up. She wound up, and I don't know what the reason was, but she had suspended two or three at least of their starters coming into that game. Purdue won the game by 60 points. And I thought, well, if that's game one, then game two it's should be a lot of fun. It's going to be okay. You know, so in that first season that, that I did, Purdue went 26-3. and three, Wow. Lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament at home to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt had a player named Heidi Gillingham who was six foot eight, And they put her in in the second half. And we were up double digits at halftime. And just the whole thing slipped away right off the bat. So I thought, yeah. well got to keep going. What's amazing to me is that you can remember all that because it's kind of how my, my mind works too. If I could ask you, like, let's flip the table. Most besides the national championship mm -hmm. game, obviously, what's most memorable moment calling a game for, a, for our program? You know, I think I always go back to the Nell Fortner year, 1996-97, when Lynn Dunn had, had been let go the year before and Nell came in and everybody in the, it picked Purdue to finish last in the Big Ten. I mean, you know, we we, we uh, recruited Carissa Yason off the track team, who wound up being such a great athlete, she wound up playing in the WNBA. <laughs> yeah. Had never played college basketball before that. But Purdue lost at Northwestern on the next to last, uh, it was the last weekend of the season, lost there on Friday, had to go to Illinois and win at Illinois to get a share of the conference championship, and it was a sellout in Assembly Hall. And Janan Rowland played out of her mind. Purdue won the game, and I just remember... You know, it's a bittersweet thing when I see the picture because Nell got carried off the floor 
by Tiffany Young mm -hmm. and Carissa Yason, both of whom were gone way too soon. So every mm -hmm. time I see that, I have such a bittersweet feeling of the elation of that moment, but also knowing the, the sadness wow. that followed that. Yeah, wow, that's, I mean, that gave me chills just listening yeah, to that, right? Yeah. But that was that was a that was great, and we wound up stopping at the Beef House on the way after, and you know well, the Purdue the, fans that were in gave everybody a standing ovation as they came in. That's a win on its own, stopping yeah. at the Beef House, and as, right? And, and as many rolls as you could eat. I mean, what, what could be a better day than that? A win and Beef House rolls. The Beef House rolls with that <laughs> strawberry jam or whatever it is. I mean, that's a win. There you go. There you go. That's awesome, Tim. Congratulations. Um, for me, as a as a player, um, you know, four years you know, hearing you call our games and, and now being able to talk to you on the show and then after games, um, your commitment to our program, we can't thank you enough. I mean, people throw the word, you know, the term goat around, but you are the voice of our program. And I don't know that there's a greater call to women's sports in our game. Um, and I can't, I just can't thank you enough from all of us. Um, you know, people who, who watch games, they don't listen to broadcasts on the TV. They turn on the radio to hear your voice. And um, just so special. And to, to do it by who you are and what you represent, um, it's it's an honor to, to be on the call with you. Well, I appreciate that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I, I get asked a lot because I do football and I do women's basketball. And that's a little bit of an unusual combination. And I, it's very simple for me. I, I have a son and I have a daughter and I want them to have equal opportunities in life. And, and even in high school, I, I did PA system or did PA address for both boys and girls basketball teams. And sports are sports. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me whether it's males playing, females playing. It's competition. And to to be associated with this program and the people in this program. And, and you know, you saw I got emotional when we had the 25-year mm -hmm. reunion. And it's because of the people. I mean, you, you're looking, you've got, a, you've got doctors and lawyers and engineers and people that change people's lives. And they're all part of this program. And the winning is great, and we're going to get back to the winning. It's going it's to be fabulous. But the people are what really stick with me. And, and that, that's what I've been really proud to be part of for the last 34 years. No doubt. But uh, don't forget the impact and the power you have on those people and the impact they're making in the world. It's because a lot of the, the lives that you have touched along the way. So thank you, Tim. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that. You. I appreciate that. And, uh, again, uh, thank you to everybody at uh, Purdue who's helped make that happen. All right. We'll have one more segment of the Katie Gerald Show after this. It's presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.
This week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at PurdueFed.com. Before we talk about Indiana State and a little bit about the schedule going in, we told you after the UCLA game that that was a really, really good basketball team. Well, with 2.27 to play in the third quarter, UCLA is leading at Ohio State 59-41. to so I think the Buckeyes are finding out that UCLA is a pretty good basketball team, too. Yeah, and Ohio State can score the basketball, but UCLA is just, they're so good. They've got um, they got some really, really good pieces. And, and they've, got, they've got the big kid inside. But the, the thing that I think that impressed me about both UCLA and Notre Dame is their defensive pressure. They get mm -hmm. right up on you. They've got good athletes, and they try to get you out of your offensive flow. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's another piece of our growth. Um, and I know we turned the ball over at a high clip, but a lot of those were on us, right? Um, I thought we handled Notre Dame's pressure way better than we handled UCLA's. Um, so growth for us in that part. But um, just some really, really good ball claim ball clubs when you're talking about UCLA and Notre Dame. All right, let's talk about Indiana State because they're coming up next. An in-state rival, they lost a tough game last night at Ohio, a chance to, to win that game late, and they turned it over. Uh, what do you know about the Sycamores? Uh, very similar to how we played them last year. Uh, you know, got some got some bigs in there who can rebound. They're going to dig out some position, you know, some post positions. So we got to keep them off the glass. Got to take care of the basketball. Uh, got a couple kids that can shoot the ball from the outside, but for the most part, we got to be able to pressure and maintain, um, keep them out of the paint, and then clean up the boards. And then we've got to we got to have some confidence on the off offensive end. We got to see the ball go through the net. Uh, you've got seven games before our next show. You've got this one uh, on Wednesday, and then Wisconsin at home, Rutgers at home, at Maryland, Iowa at home, at Penn State, Indiana at home. The one thing you've done this year, you've protected that home court 5-0 and at Mackey Arena. Got to continue to do that. We talk about trying to trying to get to the tournament. We, we No matter who we're playing, whether it's Wisconsin, Rutgers, you know, Iowa, Indiana, doesn't matter who we're playing, we've got to fill Mackey, and we've got to protect it. Alex said she's going to be out shopping on Christmas Eve. Is she going to run into you? Are you going to collide with her at some of these stores? I've uh, I've done my shopping, a lot of a lot of online ordering. Remember, I've got a game in Kansas City to go catch. So. I do remember so. that. Now, well, I, I would say good luck to the Chiefs. I wouldn't mean it, so I won't say that. I'll just say happy holidays. <laughs> well, instead. happy holidays to everybody. Um, hope everybody has a has a great holiday. All right, I want to thank our engineer Wes Scott, our producer Roger Forsyth. Video produced tonight by McCarty Cummings. So we thank you for that. Again, we won't have another show here until January 22nd, another Katie Gerald show. We will have a Ryan Walter show coming up, though. That's Wednesday night at 6.05. For Alex Guyton, for the head coach Katie Gerald's, I'm Tim Newton. You've been listening to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.